The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body? Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Nathanael, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
The text for the second Sunday after Epiphany is the gospel lesson just read from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And the title of my sermon is, Come and See that Jesus Knows and Sees You. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Amen. Well, you're minding your own business, carrying on with your life as usual. You never know when your life is going to be suddenly interrupted. The shocking news of a loved one who has suddenly died. Or life interrupted with the unbelievable news from your doctor's mouth that says, I'm sorry, but it's terminal. You only have months to live. Or life interrupted by your boss that says, well, I'm going to move you to a different office. You're relocating. And it's all the way across the country. We often don't like it when our life is interrupted. Our daily routine, we certainly don't like that interrupted. Just like we don't like to be interrupted when somebody interrupts us mid-sentence, cuts us off. Very rude. But we often all are guilty of doing it at one point in time or another. But sometimes life interrupted is a good thing, even a great thing. Even if our initial response to that life interruption is sarcastic, it's a cynical response, it's maybe a doubtful response, or even if we might show a little anger. Being made a disciple of Jesus Come, follow me, is life interrupted. Stop what you're doing and follow me immediately. Can bring quite a few reactions when we think about that. Oh, just just wait a minute, wait a minute. I have some other things that I, I need to take care of first, Jesus. The buts, but, but, or I would, if only you fill in the blank. The disciples, they aren't persuaded or given any real incentive to come follow Jesus, but in the end, they all do drop what they're doing and follow him. They're given new names and new identities new vocations, and a new realization in their lives that nothing will ever be the same for them when they come and follow Jesus as they will pick up their cross and follow him. Nathaniel, also called Bartholomew, we believe in other other sections of scripture and other gospels, when his life is interrupted, first by Philip, who who excitedly comes to tell Nathanael the good news about finding the Messiah. We found him, finally. Possibly, he was interrupted right in the middle of his time of prayer. His time of prayer and meditation under a fig tree. Maybe we think about that in our lives. I don't like to be interrupted when I'm in the middle of my prayer time, my devotion time. So what do you have to tell me? (laughs) Oh, you found the Messiah. Oh, well, really? You see, Nathaniel is one in whom there is no deceit. Honest as you come. A pious Jew, a faithful man of God seeking to find the Messiah. 
So this message of the Messiah is here. It's some serious stuff, and you better be telling the truth. You see, Nathaniel had a good hold on his life, and he certainly wanted to remain in control of that life. So that's maybe why he questioned, some believe he maybe didn't question, but he became a little sarcastic, a little cynical, and even prejudiced when Philip says that it's from Nazareth. In all my studies of the Torah, and the scriptures, nothing was ever mentioned about Nazareth. What good could ever come from there? Silly Philip, come on. But he does listen to Philip who says, come and see. Come and see. Life interrupted. This better be good, Philip. As Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed at whom there is no deceit, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him with a great confession of faith, and he says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now, Nathanael, are you okay with your life being interrupted? Certainly, this was good indeed. When we think about our prayer life, our devotional life, we certainly want to be as devoted as Nathaniel was. Honest and sincere in our prayer and devotion life that, that we don't like it, certainly when it is interrupted either. So where is that place for you? Do you have a place? A place that you go to to be in the Word, be in devotion. Maybe it's the treasury of daily prayer. Maybe it's your portals of prayer. At the kitchen table. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe not. In the bedroom. Or maybe it's even in the car. We may pick a private place where we aren't interrupted to do our time of morning or evening prayer, and this is certainly all part of following Jesus, hearing his word, being in his word. But Nathaniel, now realizing who it was that interrupted his prayer time, was certainly happy to have life interrupted, to speak face to face with Jesus, the promised Messiah, prayers answered. He's here. I see him right now. He sees me, and he knows me. But how? He's called me also to come and follow him. Continuing on then with the question that Nathaniel asked, how do you know me? For Jesus to say, I saw you when you were under the fig tree must have been a little shocking. You saw me in that private prayer place that really not many other people know about, only maybe a few. Certainly Philip probably did. Plus, what we know about fig trees is that they are very low growing to the ground with very, very dense foliage with leaves that that almost go all the way to the ground to the point that you could very easily hide under them and no one would know that you're there. So what a perfect hiding place for prayer time. But then he realized very quickly, oh yeah, <laughs> you're all-knowing. You're omniscient. 
You know all things because you are God. As Psalm 139 confesses our psalm for today, it says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar, certainly both good and bad. You search out my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. God knows you. No matter where we might be, No matter where we might be hiding, good or bad, we are never invisible to God. For he knows all of us by name. He has called all of us by name. He has called all of us to be his disciples. Come and follow me. Come and see me. We are his disciples made his children in holy baptism. He has called us by the gospel, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctified, and keeps us in the one true faith by the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he is fully devoted to us. He knows every hair on our head. He knows us so closely and so intimately. That's really what the whole theme for today is about. If you read all the different lessons, He created and formed us, and he knows all of the challenges we face. When we think we can hide from him, our sins, our faults, he isn't afraid to call us by the Spirit to repentance, call us to say, I'm sorry, Lord, I know you know what I've done wrong. I know you know my failures, my faults. I continue to fall into them. Lord, I am sorry. He knows. And he forgives. He calls us to hear his voice of comfort. What comfort it brings to know that he knows us so well. He knows what we're going through, our worst pains, our addictions, our struggles, and he bears those burdens for us. He carries them for us. He comforts us with more words. He reveals to us greater things. We certainly ain't seen nothing yet, as the song goes by Bachman Turner Overdrive. You ain't seen nothing yet, no, says Jesus, because Nathaniel and all of the other disciples are going to see the Lord reveal himself in amazing ways, miraculous ways, and even greater ways in which he goes to die for the sins of the world. We too will see heaven opened. Jesus revealed fully, face to face, on the last day. Unlike Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament, that Nathaniel, as a true Israelite, knew very well uh, a dream of a ladder reaching to heaven with angels ascending and descending. Now Jesus shows himself as the ladder, as the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Eternal life in heaven with the Lord is certainly the greatest thing that he will reveal to all of us. But our life isn't interrupted yet for that. Last week in Jesus' baptism, 
we witness that heaven was opened already. And Luther says about this, wherever the Christian church is found, <coughs> and the word of God is preached in its purity, and the sacraments administered in accord with God's word, the word also heard and accepted with a believing heart, and the articles of faith taught un adulterated there he says heaven is widely open and is no longer closed our life can be interrupted anytime any place anywhere certainly we're thankful that our life is interrupted to come and follow jesus we get to see even greater things. We get them revealed to us each and every week here in church as God in Christ Jesus reveals himself to us in this epiphany season, in his sacrificial death for our sins, in his resurrection from the grave that we too will live forever, in his ascension that he rules and reigns over all creation, and then also reveals to us in his word, his word of promise, that he will indeed return someday to take us to be with him. We gladly follow now by his grace, and we await then even greater things as Jesus is the way. And it's all worth it. It's all worth it having our life interrupted. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, we pray would always keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as we continue to follow him. Amen. Would you please stand for the